Assetto Course is one of the world's leading racing sims, known for its exceptional variety in content and good physics engine. The game released in 2014 for Xbox, PC, and PlayStation, but being about 6 years old now and updates ending a few years ago, how did the Xbox One version still hold up? Let's find out today. The Assetto Corsa track list is quite small and in some areas does leave something to be desired. It has a very Eurocentric focus, meaning that you do end up with a lot of famous tracks like Brands Hatch or Amola, but with that focus you do miss out on a lot of famous tracks, for example say Sebring or Kailami or Antelargos, famous tracks that are well known and enjoyed in other games but that you do miss out on in Assetto Corsa. In my opinion, it can get quite boring or repetitive having to race on the same tracks over and over again, and this is an area where the lack of mod support really shines through in a not so good light. On the contrary, the car list is very good with a very large variety. You've got LMP1s, GT1s, road cars, cup cars, formula cars, GT3s, SUVs, and more that I haven't even mentioned. There's something for everybody in this game. Although, I do have to say that a lot of the content is locked behind DLC, and that goes for both cars and tracks, meaning that you will have to pay some money to receive those tracks. However, they are very well priced, and in my opinion, are very good, with the content all being very well detailed, the cars feel great, and it's very you get a very, very good variety with what you pay for. The game also features a lot of classic tracks, such as Classic Monza, or Classic Silverstone. You also get lots of classic cars, for example, Nicky Lauda's Ferrari F1 car, or some old Porsche Le Mans cars. There's a lot of cars and tracks from a lot of different eras, once again, something for everybody in this game. However, this is again another area where the lack of mods does show. In PC, you can find mods for pretty much any car imaginable, and if you really are up to it, you can create a mod for any car or track that you'd like. But with Soto Corsa being on Xbox, you do get a lack of mod support, meaning that you aren't able to import those mods or get those mods into the game. So once you get the game, once in the game is kind of what you're stuck with. And once again, that boringness or repetitiveness can shine through. However, it does take a very long time to get to that ceiling because there is quite a bit of content to explore. A set of course for Xbox One does have a pretty good career mode. It is very entertaining and it sometimes can be quite challenging. You go through a large number of cars and a large number of disciplines. Sometimes you'll be doing quick races, time attacks, or hot laps. In all of these different cars, it can be quite difficult when you have to try to slide a KTM Expo around the track. It makes it very fun and quite challenging and does take quite a while to complete. And I think it is an element of the game that is very good and overall quite positive, just like most of the other elements of the game. One area AC does excel in are the amount of playable modes that you have available to you. You've got the practice mode, which is just you on a track with the ability to do whatever you'd like. It's very good for honing in a car setup or getting used to a new car that you haven't tried out yet. We also have the hot lap mode. It's very good for setting the fastest laps around the circuit. It's very efficient because once you inevitably push too hard and you crash, you don't have to do an entire lap of the circuit just to start another lap because you can hit restart and it will spawn you before the final corner so you can set yourself up for the next lap right away. You also have the race mode. It allows for a quick race with the AI which you have a really good range of adjustability from very easy all the way up to very hard. Now the PC version does have percentages, meaning that if you want to, you can tweak the AI to exactly where a skill level is at. Now while you don't have that ability in the Xbox One version, I found that it isn't too much of a problem because you do have 5 modes to choose from, which accommodate pretty well for every single skill level. There's also the race weekend mode, that is a combination of practice, qualifying, and race modes. It's very good for immersion when you want, even when you have some time on your hands, and you want to do an entire race weekend. It allows for a practice session you use to the track, qualifying to set a lap time before you can start on the grid, and then the race mode, which I've previously spoken about. There's also the drift mode. Essentially, you go to get points for drifting. And the more you drift, or the longer you drift, the more points you gain, and the more time you have left. You need to drift as much as possible to make sure that the timer does not run out. It's very fun and can be quite challenging. 
Then you got the special events mode. There are a plethora of challenges that use practically all of the previously mentioned modes. Some of these can be very challenging. I have found that a lot of the hot lap or time attack modes, it is nearly impossible for me to get to the gold levels. You need to be on some sort of god tier upper echelon, Ayrton Senna, Scott Dixon type stuff to be able to achieve this and it's a very fun challenge it forces you to try hard and try again over and over it makes you push yourself to places that maybe you thought you wouldn't have been able to push yourself before overall i'd give it a very good rating it's very fun and very challenging One of the first things you'll notice when opening up any racing game are the visuals that that game has. Now, Assetto Corsa's visuals do have very good lighting and very well modeled cars. The sunsets and sunrises are stunning and they look even better in slow-mo. But it is quite apparent that this game, while great for 2014, doesn't hold up to the standards of 2020 for, say, ACC or even Project Cars 2. Some of the surfaces can seem kind of flat, and they can lack detail, and while on PC, these problems won't be as largely notable because you do have the ability with mods to increase the visual capabilities of the game, on console you do not have that ability, and you are stuck with the same visuals that you would have had around the 2014 time. Another thing that is apparent is that with the lack of mods, you aren't going to have a night mode, and you aren't going to have rain which means that you won't be able to do, let's say, an endurance race at night or have challenging conditions in a Formula 1 car as you'd be able to, let's say, on the PC version with those modded add-ons. Another thing I want to touch on in the kind of visual section is the replay mode. Assetto Corsa on the console does not feature a free-moving drone camera for replays, meaning that if you want to, say, create content or record a clip, you are stuck with what's given to you by the replay cameras. On the PC, there are lots of mods that will allow you to have a free-flying drone camera, which makes visuals and cinematics just a lot better for creating content or recording small things just for your friends. One thing I really do like about this game's replay cameras is the ability to slow down time to a set number. So you're not stuck trying to hold the trigger at a specific value for a certain period of time. You can just set it as you will and the cars will act in slow-mo, which in some cases does show that this game does have pretty decent visuals that in some cases do hold up after six years. The Assetto Corsa online experience is generally one that is quite positive and very good. It has pretty nice servers that despite the occasional crash or disconnect, do tend to work most of the time. And these servers are still active, so there are quite a few people who are seeking to have fun online with other players of the game. There are many options that you can choose from online, such as drifting, cruising, racing, tailgate, or just open lobbies where it's literally hop in and do whatever you'd like for a few hours. For the racing itself, it is generally of a very high standard. While yes, you will get the occasional driver who is miles off the pace, because instead of course is regarded as a more serious sim, it does tend to attract more serious sim racers, and by association, faster sim racers. There is a player for someone at every single skill level, so no matter where you are, when you do hop into the online, you will generally find a pretty good race with mostly competent drivers. <coughs> mostly competent drivers. Because you do have that freedom in being able to choose whatever you'd like, at some points during the day it can be difficult to find a non-drift or cruise lobby. It can be frustrating because at points you can go for minutes, even hours on end without a single lobby popping up. And when you create a lobby yourself, there is no guarantee that people will join that lobby, so sometime if you're looking for just a quick race or to have a challenging race, you might have to leave the game and come back in a little bit to find a race. And the online in Assetto Corsa, I, do, I will say, it does have the occasional glitch. While it generally won't impact your racing, it is noticeable and it can affect the immersion aspect of the game.
Overall, I think a settled course for Xbox One is still one of the best sim racing titles available for Xbox or PS4, because you do have that limited availability for other titles such as iRacing or R Factor. I think that what you get with a settled course for the Xbox is a very good package for the money that you spend. While yes, there are some very minor drawbacks, I think overall the experience is very positive and even more so than some newer titles such as Project Cars 2 for example, which have some many drawbacks I wouldn't be able to fit it into one video anyways that's gonna do it for today let me know what you think of the game on the Xbox down below and also if you have any suggestions for video ideas I really appreciate those or any love and support at all uh, thanks for watching stay safe stay happy stay healthy stay positive I will see you guys in the next one this is me signing off peace out